Education Business Meetings in Order at 6.09 p.m. Would everybody please stand for the pledge. Well, good evening. Uh, it is very hard to believe that the 23-24 school year uh, is coming to end so quickly, and uh, with that, there are lots of end-of-year events and celebrations. Last Tuesday, in preparation for moving up day, our third graders traveled over here to the middle school to get a tour of the building, meet with members of the Junior National Honor Society to learn about student life as fourth graders. Thanks to these students, Mr. Gillespie and NJHS advisors, Ms. Chapman and Ms. Russ Mason, for taking the time to show our students around and answer all their questions. On Thursday, June 6th, our elementary drama club presented their production of Zombies the Musical to all grade levels during the day and held an evening performance for cast and families uh, and to the community. This adorable play crept into the dreams of a boy who watches too many scary TV shows the zombies teach him about understanding and appreciating differences in ourselves and others. Thanks, uh, big thanks to the club advisors, Allie and Emily Craven, for the months of before and after school rehearsals and all of their coaching and choreography skills that led to the play being such a big hit. Uh, another creative show featuring elementary students was the GWL Centennial Jasper Cropsby inspired art show held at the Teen Center uh, under Ms. Emsworth's direction. Students learned about this famous local painter of landscapes and then created their very own artistic expressions reminiscent of his stylings. Uh, last Friday, June 7th, our whole school traveled to the Town Beach Waterfront Pavilion to take our annual panoramic photo and enjoy the beauty of our community while we enjoy lunch with many of our parents who came by to meet up with us for a picnic on the Great Lawn area. And uh, just today, our third graders uh, are returning home from their homework trip to the Bronx Zoo. I was with them for most of the day, and students were fully enjoying their all-access passes to the variety of habitats and special exhibits that are currently on display. And this Thursday, we'll hold our ES Spring Concert with K-1 performing at 12.30, and grades 2-3 taking the stage at 1.45. And then it's on to our Olympic-themed field day Friday, which will be held at Lions and Francis Fields with a barbecue luncheon under the Elks Pavilion. Our last ES event of the year will be our third grade moving up next Thursday, June 20th at 10.30 a.m. And then it will be time to welcome in summer vacation uh, and encourage our students to continue reading and writing and logging adventures with their very own uh, traveling teddy program that I'll share when I discuss with Leanne Emsworth as she's key to that, uh, to that program. But, uh, and with that, that was my last ever word of it.
everything you've done to make me feel welcome and supported all these years of here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. slides. One of them was our spring concert for our fourth and fifth grade and sixth or eighth grade uh, band and chorus students. That was a uh, wonderful night. We had a great turnout um, by families um, coming out to support their students. It was also uh, wonderful to see the progress the students have made throughout the year and, and even in the short time that I've been here since January, I've been able to see um, the, those programs and those students uh, grow from, from practice to their performances that night. So that is a tribute to our staff members involved in those programs and I would like to thank them for all their efforts in preparing our students throughout the year. So that includes uh, Mr. Compton, uh, Mr. Poe, who is here this evening, and of course, Mrs. Kroll, who we'll be recognizing this evening for so many great years of service to Greenwood Lake. So thank you again to all of our music educators for uh, putting, putting together such a great performance for our spring concert. On uh, May 31st, we had our semi-formal dance. You see the big 2024 there. Uh, I know there's some shadows in that photo, but it was a great photo, so I so I included it. But the uh, the students definitely came out dressed to impress that night um, for their seventh and eighth grade semi-formal dance. Thank you to Mrs. Chapman, Ms. Casaldo, for all the work they put into organizing that event uh, for our students, and also to all of our staff members who came out. Uh, to support that night and to chaperone and be a part of, of that event. Also, if you look at, uh, to, to the right, we have uh, Mental Health Awareness Month was May. Uh, so May was Mental Health Awareness uh, Month. Our peer leadership group was involved in working on some activities to support raising awareness to that topic. And the two individuals you see in that um, photo Need no introduction, Mrs. Greenberg and Mrs. C. And I would like to emphasize, um, I, I can't emphasize enough how much those two individuals do uh, working with our students on a variety of topics, but certainly um, on the topic of mental health as well. So that, that board with the positive messages is right here behind me, if, every, if anyone wants to take a look at that uh, this evening, maybe on the way out. Um, so again, thank you to uh, Mrs. C, Mrs. Greenberg, and the peer leadership students for putting that together. Also, NJHS and student government did a combined trip to Legoland. Um, that was, uh, again, that was a trip that was, so it was in question due to the forecast, but we went for it and uh, they, had a, they had a fun day. Um, again, thank you to those teachers that are involved in that. Uh, Mrs. Chapman, Ms. Rasmason, and Mrs. Shepard uh, for uh, all the work with NJHS and student government throughout the year. And it was nice to let them have a kind of a culminating event to uh, have, have some fun and um, go on that trip. And then the other photo you see is our athletic awards. So last week we had our athletic awards ceremony. Again, a very, uh, a very good turnout. Uh, by our families to come support our, our student athletes. It was, um, it was a, a, a great recognition for all those students for both fall, winter, and spring seasons. And thank you to all of our coaches who spoke on their behalf. Uh, being an athlete, it, it takes a lot to put in the hours, travel to games, travel to contests, come back, and then uh, get your homework done late at night, early morning to make sure that you're staying on track. And our coaches put in a tremendous amount of extra work um, to prepare the athletes and also to just game plan. So I thank them again for everything they did to support those students. So that was for all of our modified athletes, including our athletes that participated in Warwick athletics at both the modified and the high school level. 
So um, again, a, another another great event to celebrate our students as we wind down uh, the current school year. Now on to something that's not as fun, testing. Testing began uh, last week. We kicked that off with the uh, Algebra Regents last Tuesday, and we are now in full swing with 7th and 8th grade final exams today. Um, our students uh, had a full day of exams, and that will continue as we uh, proceed through this week. Also, uh, some of the upcoming events that are coming. We have our 8th grade picnic, which is scheduled for June 17th. On June 18th, we will have our honor roll breakfast from 8 to 8.30 here, recognizing those students who made high honor roll or honor roll for all three quarters. And also, immediately following the honor roll breakfast, we will have our middle school academic awards beginning at 9 a.m. to recognize all the students that have been chosen to receive an academic award for their progress during the current school year. Field day for grades four through eight will take place on June 20th. And of course, we will round everything out with the eighth grade graduation on Friday, June 21st at 6.30 p.m. here at the middle school. We will be outdoors, uh, hoping for good weather and, uh, and an opportunity to celebrate those students that have been a part of our Greenwood Lake uh, school community all the way up until that point in eighth grade. So we're looking forward to that. We will also be mailing out our report cards at that time. And that's it for my report. Thank you. Thank you. A few things before I move on to the retirees that I just wanted to report on. Um, one is that the Centennial Tea Party is coming up on June 15th at 3 p.m. at the Church of Good Shepherd. If anybody wants to attend that, um, I was asked to speak about that. Also, just letting everyone know that we had a very successful fundraiser last night for the families displaced by the storms. Um, we raised um, almost $10,000 um, to give to them. So we are very excited about that, and we'll be working with the families to um, support them in the upcoming days as they move forward uh, after the storm. Um, we do have two retirements to recognize tonight. Teacher, as well as Jim McGuire, a custodian who is here. Uh, some free retirements. So uh, Jim McGuire was over here uh, with us. Uh, was a value member of the custodial unit for 16 years. He worked custodial maintenance. He kept our buildings running. He was the groundskeeper for many years, doing the lines for our sports fields and making sure that everything was uh, trimmed and proper. Uh, he almost always was the first one here on any day, opening the school and preparing it for staff and students. Uh, and the district would just like to say thank you to him for his dedication that he showed over the years to ensure that the buildings and grounds are always clean and running smoothly. I know that in his retirement, he's going to enjoy much happiness as he has a new grandchild. And although he's not waking up for our children anymore, he's now waking up for, he may be waking up for his grandchildren. Um, so congratulations on your retirement. perfectly matched the needs of the elementary school. I found Diane to be intentional. 
She looked for the why behind every situation faced and made sure she had reasons when answering those challenges with decisions. She was a planner. Diane was often three or four steps ahead of wherever we were. We would sit at admin meetings in January and she would want to talk about the third grade moving up soon. She was curious. Uh, I joked at her tenure speech about the number of questions she asked in her first four years with us. We had a running joke at admin about how many questions Diane would have written down in her notebook. Her questions showed commitment, caring, concern, plans and alternatives to plans. Sometimes a third alternative, the first two plans didn't work out. Teasing aside, these questions were always insightful and she never asked the same question twice. She took what she learned and applied it forward. She was thoughtful. I mean this word in its purest sense. Diane is always thinking. In the small moments and the big ones, she considers all aspects and pays attention to small details that others might miss. She cares deeply about the people, both the adults and the children she interacts with on a daily basis. She has a way of looking at you and seeing the person is inside. The truth is that we could go on and on about Diane and how she has shaped not just her school, but the district as a whole. She has a true sense of what it means to be part of a team as an expert at building capacity. The environment at the elementary school is what it is today because of her kindness, listening ability, supportive action, and people skills. One mark of true impact is did you leave the place better than you found it? With Diane, that answer is very easy. She elevated all aspects of the elementary school community. Her presence will be remembered and spoken of fondly for years to come. Diane, we wish you the very best in your retirement. May your years ahead be full of joy and quality time with those who love most. Congratulations. She built so many relationships over those years. She has been the conductor of the symphony, creating a beautiful melody that lives in the hearts of the children for years to come. One of the most fun things to watch in the elementary concerts, and I think you can see it here, it's hands in her hands, uh, was the, um, the use of their hands for the words of the songs. Uh, I was told it's real sign language. It's real sign. <laughs> Um, but the children did love making those gestures while singing their little hearts out. Music education stimulates, challenges, and enriches our young people during their formative school years, but its value really does last a lifetime. Music itself brings joy to the heart and feeds the soul. Laura was the deliverer of that soul-filling joy for almost 30 years here in Greenwood Lake. It is my hope, Laura, that your retirement brings you as much joy as you gave the district, the students, and your fellow staff members during your years with us. You'll be greatly missed by the Greenwood Lake community. I'm going to give you 
sunshine yellow. <laughs> to quickly recognize we had several uh, and we're going to be moving to the next agenda items which is the new <coughs> tenure recipients but I do want to take a moment we did have three people that are uh, with us tonight I believe all three of us yes um, three individuals that received tenure mid-year that are also here to celebrate and be able to have cakes we didn't have to cake at their tenure celebrations so we had to invite them back for cake um, but we have Lauren Tui who was tenured in the physical education Pam Jennings who I'm sorry Lauren Tui who was tenured as a teaching assistant, Pam Jennings, who was tenured as a teaching assistant, and Terry Roboski, who was tenured as a physical education teacher, and whose softball team went undefeated. <laughs> Okay. 
Subject 5.2. May I please get a motion to confer tenure upon Austin Frailer in the 7 through 12 English tenure area effective September 1st, 2024. Aaron, Dave, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Congratulations. <laughs> Subject 5.3, may I please get a motion to confer tenure upon Cynthia Giordano in the elementary tenure area effective August 31st, 2024. Mike, Patty, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 7-0. Okay, subject 6.1, may I please get a motion to recess the business meeting for recognition of our tenure staff and retirees. Dave, uh, Aaron, any discussion? Um, uh, We're going to gather for a picture of all of the tenure and retirees quickly. Um, Congratulations again to everybody. Oh wait, hold on. Sorry, I guess I gotta get us back into this meeting. Subject 6.2. Can I please get a uh, motion to start the business meeting back up at 6.53 p.m.? Mike, I guess I really have any motion. Aaron, any discussion? No? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Seven, Thank you. Okay, so I would like to say a few things about Brianne. Brianne came to us with a wealth of knowledge and teaching experience from 19 years as a visual arts teacher in New York City, where she worked with all levels of student populations K through 12. And she gained incredible insight into the needs of diverse communities that she served. And hiring that level of talent would have been a home run in and of itself. But because her family has deeply set roots in the Greenwood Lake community, she also brought a complete understanding of who we are, what makes us special, our values and traditions, and a heart full of Laker pride. This is very evident in everything Brienne does. She genuinely cares about the success and happiness of all of our students and their families, and always steps up to volunteer to help with any school or community project that comes along, and there have been plenty. Brienne has been instrumental in our collaboration with the GWL Centennial Committee, committee in our Veterans Day tribute, and she has also volunteered for the Steam Fair, Sweetheart Night, Community Basketball Game. She keeps score for the Modified Basketball Team, helps out with PTSA events like Bingo Night and the Scholastic Book Fair. Uh, and most recently, she uh, played in our storm game just the other night. Uh, and she's collaborated with our Project Lead the Way teacher, Jake Sheckman, to plan and organize a traveling Teddy program uh, to keep students reading and writing over the summer months. And this collegial teamwork occurs with every single staff member at the elementary school. Everyone loves Brianne's good nature, her welcoming smile, and her lighthearted laugh. She gets along with everyone and is well respected by all. I believe her passion for her work comes in part from being a parent with Mike and a mother to Brian, which gives her the perspective of wanting to have the absolute best school experience for children. When asked what her favorite thing about working here, she said, of course the kids but also the commitment and involvement shown by the parents um, as she really didn't have that when she worked in New York City. She goes above and beyond every single day to make that vision a reality for all of us. And for that, Brianne, we thank you. And it is my absolute pleasure uh, 
wanted to congratulate you on your tenure this evening. recipient that I will speak on is Cynthia Giordano. Cynthia came to Greenwood Lake as a seasoned educator working most of her career in special education which shows her ability to differentiate instruction and meet the needs of every student is evident in her lessons. Cynthia is an active member of the Greenwood Lake school community and is often seen volunteering to participate in after school events, clubs, and summer enrichment programs. She has worked with her colleagues to create continuity within the Spanish language program from K to E. She designs individual lessons that focus on activities that will engage learners while reinforcing their fundamental Spanish language skills. You can see Ms. Giordano's classroom expectations are clearly laid out and her lessons have a clear objective directly aligned to her activities. Cynthia also supports our RTI, our Response to the Intervention Program for grades four through six and has worked in the Summer Skill Builders program. Cynthia is eager to learn new things through professional studies and is often seen collaborating with her colleagues to increase the rigor for her students. Cynthia enjoys utilizing technology in the classroom and has attended district offerings on technology tools along with consulting with her colleagues. She has attended BOCES conference on targeting language studies and is focused on instilling those fundamental skills in her students. She's always willing to lend a hand including offering translation services in the district when needed. Cynthia has also served as a club advisor for Girls on the Run program, which undoubtedly has made a positive impact on those students involved in that program. It is my pleasure to also congratulate Cynthia Giordano on tenure. demonstrated commitment in that position led to, the, to his hiring in his current position, and tonight we gather to celebrate and recognize his outstanding contributions. With an infectious enthusiasm for teaching and a genuine love for literature, Austin has created a classroom environment where students are not only encouraged to learn, but are inspired to explore, question, and grow. He has made it his mission to build meaningful relationships with his students. In addition, Austin also connects with students and serves as the modified basketball coach and modified track and field coach, where he brings the same positivity, dedication, and team spirit to the young athletes he works with. But what truly sets Austin apart is his unwavering positivity. No matter the challenge, Austin approaches each day with a smile, a kind word, and a can-do attitude. His positivity is contagious, spreading throughout our school and uplifting everyone he encounters. In addition to his exceptional teaching, Austin is a true team player. He's always willing to lend a helping hand, share insights, and collaborate with his colleagues. His contributions to our district data team have been invaluable. He approaches data analysis with the same enthusiasm and dedication he brings to his classroom, using it as a tool to enhance our educational strategies and improve student outcomes. His attendance and active participation at two national conferences has helped us make informed decisions that will benefit our entire district. Again, it is my pleasure to congratulate Austin Frailer on his tenure. Okay, congratulations everybody. Subject 7.1, um, privilege of the floor. So before we start, I'm just gonna read a uh, quick statement here so that everybody understands the rules in, in case anybody's gonna get up and uh, speak. So public expression at meetings shall be encouraged and the following guidelines are intended to promote an orderly procedure for public comment participation. 
The public will be given the opportunity to address the board regarding items of interest and concern during the pri privilege of the floor section of each monthly regular board meeting. Anyone wishing to be heard must sign in on the public comment form prior to the start of the business meeting or before speaking, and the, the form is up at the podium. Speakers will be asked to state their name before addressing their question or statement to the board, and just remember, um, even though you guys ask a question, uh, we'll, we'll take the question down, but we will not answer that question tonight, okay? Uh, speakers may be limited to three minutes each in their comments or questions. Speakers are to have the right to speak without interruption and to address the president of the board, which is me. Uh, my name is John Thurber, for those of you who don't know me. Uh, comments regarding specific personnel will be ruled out of order and referred uh, to myself or the superintendent, and um, yeah, we'll be, you'll be asked to stop speaking and we need to, we'll just stop the business. Um, speakers will not be recognized for a second time until all who wish to speak have been given an opportunity. Uh, the board may suspend privilege of the floor if it is determined that continued discussion on a particular topic will prevent the board from completing its scheduled business or if one of the above guidelines are not adhered to and continued participation is deemed to be disruptive. So, privilege of the floor. unsupported, 
and unrecognized. We're in the trenches every day, and we know what our students need the best. We are asking that both Superintendent Haddon and the Board of Education to please highly consider providing three sections consistently for each grade. Thank you for your consideration. and a superintendent added. My name is Erin Campion and I've been teaching in Green Lake for 18 years. In addition, I am a member of the GLTA Executive Committee. I'm here tonight to speak about the current fourth grade class and how important it is that the class be divided into three sections moving to fifth grade. I would like to go back to October 2023 when the GLTA sent several emails regarding the current fourth grade. The letter addressed the social, emotional, and educational needs of our students. The GLTA presented data such as MAP results, SRIs, and classroom grade level curriculum that showed almost 50% of the class was reading and writing below grade level. In addition, only 19 of the 43 students scored at grade level for math, leaving just about 50% below grade level. Need I remind you that this class was most impacted by school closures and the combination of remote and in-person instruction. Their second grade year had them pushed into two sections, many of them returning to school for the first time since the fall semester of kindergarten. The needs of these children, social and emotional, in addition to educational, were so great that all available teachers including special area teachers, were involved in providing intensive instruction in order to bring them closer to the second grade standards. As a result of their needs, we're separated into three sections of third grade the next year. Additionally, the special education needs for this group were considerable. If we, the educators, reach out to you imploring you to help us with a class setup that was proven to not be in the best interest of our students, why didn't you intervene and help support our students for the best outcome? These students were put into two sections when both building principals, our curriculum director, and our head of special education, our curriculum coach, and teachers from both buildings thought it would be a disservice to do so. I ask you tonight, how is this allowed to happen? In our attempt to connect the situation, the GLTA asked to meet with you in order to develop a plan to address the needs of these students. Why didn't it happen? How come we do not have full transparency here? That, what recourse does the Greenwood Lake Teachers Association have if the very people we work for don't regard our professional opinions? We are the experts in the classrooms. Our opinion and our recommendations should matter. As many of you and students in the district know, fifth grade is one of the biggest transitional years. The legal curriculum is challenging, even for those performing on grade level. To address their needs and to continue to close the gaps, these students show we are recommending that the incoming fifth grade be split into three sections. And fortunately for us, we have the teachers available to make that happen. And furthermore, as we attempt to create the class list for next year, you should know that we have an abundance of behavioral issues as well as the request from parents to separate their child from other children in the grade. This is becoming nothing short of impossible. The only solution is to make three sections. I hope by speaking tonight, my professional viewpoint will be strongly considered. Thank you for your time. My name is Jane Letty. I've been in this district for 35 years, 
and I teach sixth grade math along with my companions here and Mr. Malone, Mr. Malone who was, was not able to be present. We're hoping that the fifth grade, the current fifth grade, that is in three sections, is moving forward in three sections. This year, we had a group of 43 students who were in two sections and it did not work. As of today, 37% of those students are on probation or ineligible. It's disgraceful. That doesn't make us feel like we had a successful year. The year, the year would have worked better if those students had been divided into three sections so that we were able to better address their needs. There were so many behavioral needs. They were in the office more, they were in the classroom. I'm sorry. One thing this district, as long as I have been here, has prided itself on is small class size. Everyone knows small classes are better than larger ones. You develop relationships with students in that small momentary homeroom period in the morning. You make connections with people. Without connections, nothing works. Um, an 18 to 1 ratio has always been the golden ratio. Anything above that is not acceptable. It will allow us to address not only the behavioral, the emotional, the social, the instructional, the organizational skills of these children, than to have three sections. Keeping the grade levels will allow the teachers much more time to focus on the student needs, eliminating a lot of the students who are ending up in an RTI class. I teach sixth grade, I teach fourth grade RTI, I teach fifth grade RTI. I see it every day of my life. Sixth grade specifically is the gateway to the middle school experience of seventh and eighth grade. The seventh and eighth grade is always three sections. Sixth grade is in that wing. We need to satisfactorily transition those kids to three sections. Sixth grade, they're together. We can even modify that more so that as they move forward, they are with different people. Some of these students who are higher academically have been in this classroom with, with these students who are not performing up to par from K through six. I'm asking you, my cohorts are asking you to please consider keeping it, I don't know what the plan is, but to please keep it in three sections. Thank you. Thank you. student behaviors. While they were joking, I actually think they were onto something, except we as a district share some of that blame. COVID quickly and drastically changed the landscape of, of the education world, and we haven't recovered from that way of thinking. COVID broke something in our inability as a district to hold students accountable, not only for their behavior, but also their effort, homework, classwork, and attendance. We have many students with more than 20 absences and or tardies. We have many students failing a minimum of one subject area. We have a handful of students failing all of their course subjects, and I think we can all agree student behaviors aren't so great either. Despite these major concerns, we have eliminated almost all consequences these students might have received. By allowing these students to move on to the next grade without any additional work or effort, we are teaching our students that they don't have to try, don't have to put in any effort all year, and don't have to show up because the next grade is waiting for them. Let's think about that for a minute about those students as we send them on to high school. Think of that student as a young adult in college or a professional in the workplace. Would you employ someone who doesn't complete their responsibilities? Someone who is late or absent more than they are at work? What about the person who shows up every day but never lifts a finger to help while everyone around them rises to the occasion? I think whether we're willing to admit it or not, we know that this employee wouldn't work last longer than a week. 
Our job in the district, no matter the position we hold, is to create an environment where students can learn the core subjects, but also that empathy, critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, communication, and social emotional skills. Additionally, we try to instill ethics, values, and other skills to create well-rounded citizens who can and do contribute to our society. Based on th how things have been going, our students are not ready. It is our job as a district to do something now before it is too late. I know an issue such as this one seems insurmountable, but there are things we can do to start going in the right direction. Paraphrasing what someone once told me is never bring a problem to the table without suggesting a solution. What I propose is we consider reinstating a true summer school program. This means mandatory full day, full summer week, which we know doesn't include Fridays, where students can make up everything they missed and learn the topics they missed. My solution also entails releasing the dates to summer school well in advance and ensuring that parents know and understand that if their child does not attend, that they cannot move on. Included in this idea would be the continuation and discussion with the Academic Eligibility Committee that was started over the summer that has a really good base for what you know to leap off of from there. I urge you to consider what I brought up tonight as we are quickly watching these issues grow larger and larger in our district, and I would be happy to discuss this further with you should you have any questions. Thank you for your time. two children as Lakers. My husband and I chose to raise our children here because of the top-notch education we received, as well as the values, the smaller class sizes, and a close-knit community that comes with it. Our oldest child will be entering into fifth grade in the middle school this coming fall. We all know that the biggest leap in curriculum comes in fifth grade. I am saddened to learn that the students will likely fall into two sections again this upcoming year. Last year, as parents, we voiced our concerns to the board and the superintendent, and we were reassured that our students would be pulled out for leap, extra help, and it wouldn't impact the students being in two sections. Well, this year proved that we need to revisit that plan and make some changes. As you are aware, these students began their educational journey during the COVID pandemic and have never really recovered from it. Although COVID itself isn't a huge medical threat right now, as a parent, I can tell you it had a great impact on their educational, social, and emotional needs. Our students were separated into two separate classes in the past when there were additional resources for them available in the district. As evidenced by test scores, this was not the best decision for the students, and this upcoming school year, that they are being stripped of these resources that they need and very much deserve full time, not just here and there throughout the day. Why are smaller class sizes where students can thrive on a more personal level and receive more resources and individualized instruction being, being taken away from them? This class, more than any other class, deserves the attention with the wonderful teachers that the school district already has in place full time. It would be a complete disservice to separate them into two sections again. I believe this matter is of the utmost importance and is deserving of consideration. I urge you to review their test scores, review their social and emotional needs, and speak to their previous teachers and the parents, and consider not allowing the class of 2032 to slip through the, the cracks again. students in the school district, but I am here about the fourth grade. I'm going to keep this short because I feel the teachers have all said everything that needs to be said about the need for three sections. I have read your six goals that you envision as a board. As you begin to make your decisions about next year, I hope that you really believe that each goal is met for each student, especially number six, which is continue with the pursuit of excellence in education for all students of the Greenwood Lake School District because our fourth grade needs three sections. These students are falling behind academically and behaviorally. And this is just, I don't have this written down, but as a parent and as someone who works with these students, 
I can see it from both ends as a parent and as someone who works with them and I see what their behavior is like and they deserve more help than they're getting. Not even academically, but socially, behaviorally, they really need a lot more time spent on them, teaching them how to be the best students they could be in and out of the classroom. Thank you. behalf of another parent and I'd like to read that on their behalf they couldn't attend tonight. They, you can submit it and we'll, uh, we'll read it. Uh, I can't read it. It's not your, yeah I mean it's not officially your statement so I, I don't know if it's actually. I have a signed it. statement from her. Yeah, I mean we, they, you can submit it to the school. Oh. Okay. Unfortunate. Hello, I am Laura Kroll. I waited 28 years to come and talk to you. Um, I'd like to thank you for allowing me the privilege of the floor. Having been in the district for 28 years, with the first year working through BOCES as shared services, I've been fortunate to work with an incredible staff. I was welcomed to the district, given guidance, developed working relationships that helped me make my program successful and helped other people with theirs. To this day, I'm grateful that a number of staff who offered a chaperone or a choral trip to Albany for a nationally recognized program, Music in Our Schools Month. There, we not only perform a full concert program, but we have the opportunity to explore the history of New York and the museum, and equally important is the opportunity to meet the government officials who represent this district as they come to hear us every year. It is a good thing for the school that we remind them of who we are. This year, the students were even quite surprised to find out about my upcoming retirement when Senator Skoufis' aide announced it, congratulated me, and was completely unaware that it was not common knowledge at that time. I have always made my position of music teacher my number one priority in the district with the students, the family, and staff. I've done my very best to meet the educational needs while also guaranteeing mutual respect and trust. After all, that is the only way we can reach our goals successfully. My other responsibility is towards my union. At, at the retirement of our previous, previous grievance writer, I was asked to step into her position, and I did. And she reminded me that the grievance writer is not always the favorite role, <coughs> simply because they're responsible for addressing potential contract violations and issues that are relevant to the union. In that time, I filled the role. Most of our grievances are addressed in a comfortable time frame, they're written in the hand and the words of the superintendent, and most importantly, we have tried to maintain a professional relationship that continues with the GLTA and the district understanding that it is simply a part of the process and nothing personal. Over the past few years, we've had a few issues with the way the grievances have been handled. Um, we were getting verbal responses at one point, and so we started to request them written. Well, we started getting them requested written um, because that is the proper format, uh, format through NYSA to have all grievances requested in a written manner. It started to appear that it was being written in a kind of legal means. It might not have set out to sound condescending or dismissive or even complicated, but it has started to appear to be just that. So it's clear that somebody who is well-versed in legal opinion is actually the writer of the grievances, when all we really want is just a response to move forward and understand that this is never anything personal. This is how our current situation is right now. We have passionate teachers here and staff who believe in the school, the students, and this community. As a unit, we are requesting to be heard by our administration and our board, our board of Ed, and we will in turn do the same. 
You send your children to us every day, fully believing in the staff and trusting we will put our best foot forward to ensure their success. We are respectfully requesting an open and transparent working relationship. It is imperative to change the current climate within the staff and the buildings, which as a unit currently recognizes themselves as undervalued. As a retiring teacher, I look forward to a time where I can meet with all of you, any of you, at any convenience of yours for a proper exit interview. Personally, I cannot begin to express my gratitude for the opportunities I've had to work here with the staff past and present. They've truly supported my program and I've tried to do the same for them. There are so many great programs and events that come from these staff on a daily basis. You should be aware of all the things that occur here in each building that don't make the pages of the social media of the school. Thank you. Anybody else before we start the business meeting back up? No? Thank you, everybody that spoke. Uh, it's been well noted. Okay, moving along. Uh, subject 8.1. May I please get a motion to accept the results of the 2024 2025 annual budget vote and election as presented? Aaron, Dave, any discussion? All in favor? Aye, motion passes seven to zero. Subject 9.1. May I please get a motion to approve the May 2024 financial report as presented at this meeting? Mike, Michelle, any discussion? All in favor? Aye, motion passes seven to zero. Subject 9.2, may I please get a motion to approve the transfer of funds for the middle school milk cooler as presented? Aaron, Mike, any discussion? All in favor? Aye, motion passes seven to zero. Subject 9.3, may I please get a motion to approve the 2024-2025 Board of Education meeting calendar and approve the date of the organizational meeting as presented? Mike, Dave, any discussion? All in favor? Aye, motion passes seven to zero. Subject 9.1, may I please get a motion to authorize the superintendent to execute, <coughs> execute health service agreements as presented? Mike, Aaron, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes seven to zero. Subject 9.5. Can I please get a motion to approve the QBE Insurance Corp as the student accident insurance carrier as presented? Michelle, Mike, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes seven to zero. Subject 9.5, may I please get a motion to approve Rockland Bosey's Cooperative Energy Purchasing at Services as presented. Dave, Aaron, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes seven to zero. <coughs> Subject 9.2, may I please get a motion to approve the one-time purchase appropriation transfer as presented. Mike. <coughs> Ian, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes seven to zero. Subject 9.8, may I please get a motion to reclassify BOCES appropriations as presented? Mike, Patty, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes seven to zero. Subject 9.9, may I please get a motion to approve the continuation of reserve funds as presented? Aaron, Dave, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 
Motion passes 7 to 0. Subject 9.10. Did I miss one? Why did you miss one? No, I got it. I marked it up here. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, 9.10, may I please get a motion to approve the appropriation of funds for the Retirement Contribution Reserve Fund as presented. Mike, Patty, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Subject 9.11, may I please get a motion to approve the appropriation of the fund to the Employee Benefit Accrued Liability Reserve Fund as presented. Dave, Mike, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Subject 9.12. May I please get a motion to approve the appropriation of funds to the Employee Benefit Accrued Liability Reserve Fund as presented? Mike? Patty? Any discussion? I don't know, one should be the depth. I think the wording is on This one, sorry, 9.12 should be um, a motion to approve the debt services reserve fund as presented. Mike? Dave, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Subject 9.13, may I please get a motion to accept the generous donation from Joan, from Joan Finn for the John P. Finn Award as presented. Dave, Michelle, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Thank you very much for the donation. <coughs> out of order. Uh, subject 10.1. May I please get a motion to appoint Kristen Santo Pietro as elementary teacher as presented? Mike, Ian, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Subject 10.2. May I please get a motion to appoint <coughs> Aji Ko as music and choral teacher as presented? Michelle, Ian, any discussion? Thank you for attending tonight. Congratulations. Woo! Subject 10.3, may I please get a motion to appoint Michael Lopresti and Christopher Ferry as videographers for the school year as presented. Patty, Aaron, any discussion? All in favor? As long as the mics keep working, we're fine. Uh, motion passes 7 to 0. Subject 10.4, may I please get a, a motion to accept with regret the resignation of Kevin Flynn as presented. Mike, Patty, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Subject 10.5. May I please get a motion to appoint Walton Landrew as school bus driver as presented? Aaron, Michelle, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Subject 11.1, may I please get a motion to accept the CPSE and CSE recommendations as presented at this meeting? Mike, Michelle, any discussions? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Subject 12.1, may I please get a motion to adjourn to executive session regarding negotiations pursuant to the Taylor Law involving the GLTA SRP union, and no action will be taken after executive session. Dave, Aaron, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending. <laughs>